Yeah, I wanted to show you how to make a custom power board for your quadcopter. I have a Neon 250 and I drew up my power board design in Illustrator, as you can see here. Then I copied it over into a new file, made it black and white. Basically, this is more important if you do it with the toner transfer method, but on this video, I will show you how you can also do it. Make sure you print it at 100% and not scaled. So I printed it out, laid on my quadcopter and make sure it fits. Then I cut it out. This is the final layout. Make sure it fits once again. Let's move on to the next stage. You need a piece of copper PCB. You can buy these in electronic stores or online. Um, next, as mentioned, you could use the toner transfer method. You will see I use another method. Um, I don't know if this is used, but <laughs> that's a method I came up with. First I put down some insulation tape. I also could have used a vinyl cutter, but since most people won't have one, I will do it by hand. Basically, um, the copper will be etched away where there is no tape and will stay there where there is tape. And the reason for using tape, you will see in some minutes. There are several different ways to do PCBs. I usually use the toner transfer method as already mentioned, uh, but if you want to know how to make your own PCBs <laughs> in a much faster and easier way than this, you can have a look at some other YouTube videos. Spoiler alert, I will paint the board afterwards so this is the reason I used this method. So now I glue down my design using some clear tape. And now let's cut out our design.
So after we're done, let's remove the access tape. Maybe you need to cut it in some corners. Let's also speed this one up. Now you are done and you end up with something similar to this one. Now's the time I want to drill the hole in the center. I <laughs> missed that step and had to do it later, but um, now would be the perfect time for this. Let's move on with etching. There are different um, solvents for etching PCBs. You also get them online. Just have a look at YouTube. There are so many videos on how to etch PCBs. I moved it a bit, then set it down, moved it a bit, waited some time. This process took 30 minutes. If you use another chemical, it may get faster, but okay, it did the job. Almost there. It takes the longest time for the space in between the lines, but make sure this is really cleared out. <laughs> you don't want it to shorten out, or you will need another battery pack. So let's take it out. After taking it out, you wash it under some water. Then we move on to the next step. Now I take a saw and cut it out. You could also use a Dremel for this. Now clean up the edges with a, a file. As you can see, I still didn't think of putting the hole into, in the center. Now let's move on. So we still get our tape on top. And now I use some black spray paint. I have laying around and give it some thin coats of spray paint. Then I took a Molotov pen. <laughs> it's a lacquer pen in green to fit my design. And yeah, just paint the edges. As already mentioned, this is a bit overkill because maybe you will never 
see it again <laughs> when it's buried under flight controller and all the other stuff in your quadcopter but hey we can do it so <laughs> why not if you want to do it fast just use the toner transfer method and you're good to go don't have to paint it but hey so now we are finished with painting we can Take away the tape that's left on the top. Now for this, I use an exacto knife again and gently peel it off. So let's also speed this one up. So now we are done with our power board. As you can see I, in the meantime I drilled the hole in the center. So let's put it on. Have a look. Yeah, fits perfect. I also uploaded the my design for you if you have the same Neon 250 from Hobby King, you can use this design if you want to. <laughs> or go ahead and do your own. It's pretty easy to do on our own power board. So next thing I applied some solder to the top because I liked the silver and um, so it will not corrode and to reduce the electrical resistance of the board. Next I soldered up my ECs and then I added the power lead from the bottom through the hole. I'm soldering or soldering whatever. <laughs> you want to make sure uh, to put all the black leads on one trace and the red wires to the other. So this is my finished power board. I used some neon zip ties and also some rubber bands. Kids use these rubber bands to make some bracelets, but I used it for securing my cables. So here are some shots. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Hope this video did not get too long. Uh, yeah, see you.